Okay, so this video is going to be comprised of three different problems that a subscriber needed help with. So I'm just going to try to break them down to make them as simple and as easy as possible. So this problem says, if n is the least of two consecutive odd integers, which of the following represents the sum of the two integers? Okay, so it seems complicated, but it's not as complicated when you understand what they're looking for. Integers just means numbers. Odd, we know what odd numbers are. So it would be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. And then consecutive just means numbers that come right after one another in a sequence. So if the first number is 1 and they're all odd numbers, the next number in that sequence would be 3. The next number after that would be 5. The next consecutive number would be 7. So they're just asking us, for example, if we had 5, 7, 9, 11, those are all numbers or integers, they're all odd, and they're all consecutive coming one after another. Let's pretend for a second that 5 is n. It says n is the least of the two numbers. Let's pretend that 5 represents n. In order to get from 5 to the next number in sequence, the next consecutive number, you have to add 2. 5 plus 2 is 7. So in order to go from the first integer n to the next integer, you'd have to do n plus 2. So the first integer is represented by n. The second integer would be n plus 2. So they simply said, what is the sum of the two integers? So you would just add n plus n plus 2. So how do we add n plus n plus 2? I go ahead and put the invisible one in front of the two n's so that we can combine like terms. I know that these two terms are alike because they both have the same variable n and they both have n to the same power, which is to the one power. So one n plus one n is two n. And then we have the plus two. There are no other just numbers by themselves. So we're just gonna go ahead and bring down the two, two n plus two. So the answer would be 2n plus 2. So now we're going to go ahead and go to this next problem. It's asking us for the formula for the volume of the cylinder is V equals pi r squared h. They're giving us what the value of r is and what the value of h is. And they want us to tell, us, tell what is the volume of the cylinder in terms of V. So what they want us to do is they want us to just take this formula, V equals pi r squared h, and they want us to fill in what the values are for r and for h. So before I go ahead and fill in what the variables mean, I'm just going to write it pi times r squared times h. I'm separating them by multiplication signs. When they're written all together, they're being multiplied. So I'm literally just going to put the multiplication signs in between. Now that I have the multiplication signs in between, that's going to help me out. So now I'm just going to fill in what the values are. Pi just stays the same, but we know that R is equal to 2B. So instead of writing R, I'm going to write 2B squared multiplied by H, which is 5B plus 3. 5b plus 3. And I'm going to put that in parentheses. So now let's just go ahead and multiply things out. We're just going to bring down the pi. Then we're going to do 2b squared. So 2 squared would be 4. B, square, b squared would just be b squared. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring down the 5b plus 3. And now I'm just going to multiply everything out. So now I'm going to do pi times 4b squared. So it would just be equal to 4 pi b squared. And then we're going to multiply that out by the binomial 5b plus 3. So we're going to just distribute now. We're going to take this whole value and multiply it by 5b. And we're going to take that whole value and then multiply it by 3. So 4 we're going to multiply 4 times the 5, which is 20. The pi, there's no other pi in here, so we're just going to bring down the pi. And then we're going to do b squared times b. And I'm going to pull that over to the side. b squared times b. 
it's b to the first power when you're multiplying variables that have different exponents you just have the same variable and then you add the exponents so it would be b to the third power so 20 pi b to the third power so now that we multiplied everything by 5b we're now going to multiply everything by 3. so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing 4 times 3 is 12. there's nothing to multiply the pi again so we bring down the pi and then there's nothing to multiply the b squared again so we're just going to bring down the b squared and our answer is going to be 20 pi b to the third power sorry this should be a plus sign plus 12 pi b squared and so we have this answer right there so our answer would be b so now let's go ahead and go to the third problem so the third problem is the area of the triangle above is 21 what is the value of x they're asking us to take out outside information if you're taking this test you probably were gonna give, um, they sometimes give you a sheet with all the formulas on it. If they do, that's wonderful. So the area of a triangle is area equals one half base times the height. So let's go ahead and put in what the base is. The base is the bottom of the triangle. So the bottom of the triangle is x plus one. So one half times x plus one. And then the height is how tall the triangle is from the bottom. And so the height is just x. So you can do this the complicated way or you can do it the easy way. You don't have to be a mathematician in order to get this problem right. And so I'm going to show you the route that I would recommend taking so that you could just get the answer correct. And I'm just going to use my answer choices and I'm going to plug it in to see if I can plug in A, B, C, and D, which one gives me the correct answer. So the area of the triangle is equal to 21. So instead of writing A, I'm just going to write 21 equals 1 half times x plus 1 times x. And first, I'm going to use the number 3. So 21 is equal to 1 half times 3 plus 1 times 3. 3 times 1 is 4. Okay, 1 half times 4 or 1 half of 4 is 2. 2 times 3 is equal to 6. 21 is not equal to 6, so A is not the correct answer. And then I'm going to go ahead and try to plug in B. So A is equal to 1 half base times height. The area is 21, 1 half times x plus 1 times x. If we're going to plug in, and instead of writing x, we're going to write 6 plus 1 times 6. Okay. So 1 half times 7 times 6 equals 21. 7 times 6 is 42 times half equals 21. 1 half of 42 is 21. So then we know that B is the correct choice. You don't have to worry about what method you use. They're not going to say, hey, after you're done taking your test, let me see what method you use. Let me see your scrap piece of paper. This is just about getting the right answer and being able to pass in order to do whatever you need to do in order to, to graduate. So all you have to do is use your resources. They give you choices. So we know that X is either going to be equal to one of these four choices. If this problem becomes too complicated to do in the regular way they want you to do it, then go ahead and just plug in the answer choices and to see which one works out. I really hope that this video has helped you just a little bit. If you have any further questions, please let me know. And just remember that I am a professional tutor. I do one-on-one -on -one tutoring um, for standardized testing, including the TS TSI and any other tests that you may be taking. Just send me an email at amberray50 at gmail.com and I hope the best for you on your test.